Hey guys, what's up? This is Dan here with Grapevine Recording and welcome to another episode of Inside the Sound. Uh, I'm very sorry that the previous part had to be took down for for a while. Uh, there was just a couple of copyright things that we had to clear up, but fortunately those have now been cleared up, so that video has been um, re-released, if you will. There'll be a link or something on screen to bring you to that. Um, so in this episode, it's kind of going to be not necessarily a little bit different, but I'm not just going to go from one thing to another and kind of explain how I've done it. I'm going to do that a little bit um, because there are a couple of little sounds that I want to kind of explain in more depth. But overall, this video is going to show how to use, I guess, how to use like synthesis or how to use, you know, like a, a drone sound to kind of build suspense or build uh, unease, if you will. Uh, this movie that I've been working on is called Simon. And um, again, I was the sound effects editor for this film. Uh, once all these films are, you know, in a position to be released and stuff like that, I am going to make a video just explaining where you can go and see them if you indeed would like to go and do that. So it's kind of like a, a murder mystery type of movie. And uh, there are points in it which kind of get a little bit unnerving. Um, and our overall direction for this movie at least was to, you know, really underpin the unease with kind of non dia you know diegetic sounds you know things that don't necessarily appear on screen but just get used as a layer to underpin like the emotion i guess that's kind of what we were aiming for so um there's this part where this woman here is a reporter and she's a uh, kind of trying to find find out more clues on what's going on and she goes to speak to this doctor and basically what happens is she finds these uh, these knives underneath here. So during this scene, uh, please be aware as well that this is just the effects mix. You know, there's no like foley or anything in this. So like more will be added in towards the end. I just wanted to isolate some of these sounds. So the way we've, the way I've, I've approached this is as like to try and use some drones and some reverse drones and stuff like that to, to bring this little this section to life, I guess. So uh, I'll just play it so you can have a listen. That's basically it. I'm going to have to hide that up because I was super, super quiet. Um, so basically what that is is just a, a series of of um, of drones which kind of get used in sequence to, to you know, underpin certain elements. And there's the the bit where kind of like the, the muffled kick comes in just to emphasize, you know, the, the I guess, change in shots. So the, you know, the difference in... Just to kind of like emphasize the transitions i guess uh, there's another thing here i don't know what this is so we will have a listen to see what this sound is and why i got rid of it ah right yeah so as i was mentioning at certain points throughout the movie we kind of use these drones to as indicators of certain things that are going on so a specific sound will kind of be you know a an audio clue maybe to the listener that certain things are going on and sometimes the uh, we don't actually use them correctly on purpose so if you think of uh, the jason Voorhees like breathing type thing is it was always used as a identifier that this type you know that he's near or or things like that so we kind of play with the conventions of that a little bit um so first of all i'll break down the different the different drones that we use um there are two primary ways that i do this uh, the main one, well, I guess the first one is uh, with all sample libraries that you can buy, you get some kind of cinematic drone effect. It's very, very in vogue. And uh, so this is the first one that we used. I kind of, uh, the drone was there and I just reversed it round. Uh, EQ'd it a touch to, you know, kind of make it fit what I wanted. As you can see, it's extremely lowered down, so I will hide it up in 
in like post edit and so you can you know hear it easier so just that on its own is well what i'll do i'll reverse it and you can see what it was like um uh where is it what's it on that you can see what it was like when we first got it it was like this With a pretty long tail so the way we the way we did it is we kind of like faded it out at the end so this will build in edited it uh, reversed it round put some eq on it originally and uh, compressed it a touch but we kind of printed all that effect because at times with this sound because it appears quite a lot throughout the you know certain reels you know it happens again there the eq actually gets a little bit of automation on it just to change you know, from time to time, just so it can fit in better. Uh, with that, it kind of allowed us to uh, use a consistent sound over and over again at certain points, as I say, just as like an identifier. And I think it's a really important, you know, feature, I guess, to use as, you know, as like an audio person is that there are certain conventions that you can dictate yourself. So if, like, where I used that, that metal scrape sound before, that was actually used to, when it, whenever you see this mask that was like the sound of that mask so we wanted to kind of put that in as a layer really low in so like that sound was still there so as a listener you would kind of pick it out because you're so used to it before and you kind of start connecting the dots in your head but um we thought that that might have been a little bit too obvious so we kind of removed that um so what we what we were able to do with that as i say is just to commit to some consistency throughout the throughout the movie and but it wasn't enough on its own. Like it had a really nice slow build, and obviously with this we could we could change adjust the fades as, as we wanted to, you know, fit it in sync and stuff like that. But we needed some more, which was these effects down here. So uh, obviously the heartbeat sound or like the kick sound is what it is. You know, we know what that's for. That's just to emphasize the transition. Where these kind of I'll show how I made these in a moment actually, because uh, it's kind of the second way of how to do this. So with these, these are actually uh, synth sounds that have been bounced out. Uh, the synth in question for this was Absinthe 5. Uh, I do believe that this is now all set up to use. If I push the key, it'll work. Yes. So uh, with Absinthe, I know it's kind of a very, very well-used synth in sound design for film and games and stuff. And uh, with very good reason, actually, you know, the amount of... The amount of presets that are pretty much ready to be used at a moment's notice are, you know, there's loads of them and they're so easily tweakable with the mutate option. You know, you can adjust, you can random, randomize certain parameters to get, you know, obviously a random sound. And it's so easy to actually, you know, create macros or to actually adjust specific things about the patch, like very, very, very easily. So um, I use the abstract bells sound so also what i was able to do was to do this we could um i adjusted a lot of like the envelope stuff because of course I, we needed that slow build and um just the type of just the type of sound overall was kind of perfect for what we needed and what's great about this is when when i use it across the keyboard is yeah it does pitch but so many of the different sounds um you know, even just from one key to the next, they're just so massively different from each other. So straight away, it gives us just a massive, massive range of, of different tones to use and these different types of uh, drones that we can add in. So basically what I did was just played them out on a, you know, just push record, played them all out. And then just bounce them to a tr to a uh, to a different track. So when it comes to actually listening to these, uh, if I get rid of them,
you know, you can you can play it in and you can kind of perform the type of drone that you want. And uh, <laughs> like, I think it, it did work out pretty well. So I think like just using a mix of, you know, any kind of sounds that you can find, you know, even in the real world, you know, there are so many types of noises that make, you know, there's so many real world things that make this kind of kind of sound. Uh, my car door, for example, if you close it slowly, makes like a really, you know, painful painful uh, scrape uh you know which you can be used as as a drone if you're affected in the right way um so with all these these have some kind of reverb or some kind of you know modulation effect to kind of just make it a little bit more more interesting i guess and the whole point of this and i think is one thing that I'd, I'd emphasize with this is that you know subtlety is key for this um because a lot of this was i guess trying to be a little bit subconscious and a little bit clever with the listener. We didn't want to just overly go, um, you know, we didn't want to we didn't want to play it too obvious because, of course, if we did, the uh, you know the effect is lost, and the whole point of this is just to underpin the story. And uh, I guess that's kind of our role is just to emphasise the you know the work that's gone on before us with in you know the, with the writing and the acting and and stuff like that. We're not trying to steal the show. We're trying to just embellish what was what was already there so i think with this i think it's an extremely useful useful tool especially if you know that's the kind of thing that you're going for in this movie that's that's also very important you can't just put this everywhere you know subsequent films since here we haven't done this technique because it just didn't fit um but yeah that's kind of just wanted to, what i wanted to say you know just the use of these drones can really can really set an emotion and Again, if you use them subtly enough and, you know, if you'd explore the different timbres that you can get, you know, out of synthesizers and out of out of real life sounds, you can really, you know, add layers to the sound. You know, it's not just it's not just things that you see. You can kind of dictate how a listener or how a viewer feels because of this. And uh, yeah, I think it's really useful. Um as I say, sorry it took so long to get back into doing this. Um as I say, we just had to kind of uh, sort a couple of things out first before we could, you know, move on uh, properly, which we now have, so expect more of this. Uh, now it's in a great position because I can start making videos on, you know, things that I'm doing currently. Like with this, I had to kind of go back a little bit in time to, to work on something. So uh, the more stuff that we get, the more stuff I'm going to be able to record and, and show you different techniques and stuff like that so uh yeah thank you all very much for watching uh hopefully you enjoyed this and i will see you all very soon bye bye